Okay, and now we go to the second uh, homage to a very important, uh, one of the most important um, architectural forces during the Renaissance, the one who was considered the first, um, the first architect, and I will explain why. And that is Leon Battista Alberti, also who died on April 25th, and today is April 25th. So <clears throat> Leon Battista Alberti, 1404-1472. Leon Battista Alberti was an Italian Renaissance humanist, author, artist, architect, poet, priest, linguist, philosopher, and cryptographer. He epitomized the Renaissance man. Indeed, he did. Although he's often characterized exclusively as an architect, as James Beck has observed, to single out one of Leon Battista's fields over others as somehow functionally independent and self-sufficient is of no help at all to any effort to characterize Alberti's extensive explorations in the fine arts. Although Alberti is known mostly <clears throat> for being an artist, he was also a mathematician of many sorts and made great advances to this field during the 15th century. His two most important buildings are the churches of San Sebastiano, 1460, and Sant'Andrea, both in Mantua, and we are going to see them. Uh, this was the man, this formidable uh, creator who announced the Renaissance in, uh, in very convincing ways and uh, who epitomized indeed uh, the, the formidable uh, creative impetus of, uh, of those uh, giants of human spirit, Alberti, Raphael, Michelangelo, Leonardo, Brunelleschi, and so on. Facade of Santa Maria Novella. I will show another presentation with my own photographs uh, with, with his works in, in Florence and Mantua. But now this is just a, an ad memoir of his most important buildings, perhaps his only buildings. The facade of Santa Maria Novella in Florence, he just did the, 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 the facade of the building is right near the train station. We are going to see it in detail uh, further on. A beautiful Renaissance facade showing the complexity, the, the, the sensitivity, the sensibilities of uh, Leon Battista Alberti. Great work. And again, those who doubt the value of ornament should think twice because most major works in architecture cannot uh, distance themselves from ornament. And in this case, it is obvious. I mean, you know, imagine this without the ornament. It's impossible, you know? And he created, he found joy, he found the, uh, you know, uh, pleasure in, in, in inventing formally all these ornaments, which belong uh, intrinsically, intimately to the, the elevation of this uh, great uh, church facade, Santa Maria Novella in Florence. This in itself is a creation, you know, just what happens here in the center, you know, this circle and everything else, and they connect, they are all celebrating creativity and beauty. So this is in Florence, Santa Maria Novella, the main uh, the elevation of this church. Now Palazzo Rucellai from 1446, 1440, I don't know what that's five is there, it shouldn't be after six anyway. Uh, it's, it's a palace here also, from what I read, uh, he on, uh, only worked on the elevation here and not on the whole building. This is also in Florence. So again, we are talking about Leon Battista Alberti. We had seen Santa Maria uh, del Fiore. We are seeing now uh, Santa Maria Novella, sorry. Uh, we are seeing now uh, Palazzo, Palazzo Rucellai. There is also a chapel across the street from this, and we are going to see it also in Florence. Uh, 
Now, uh, the, the, the main elevation is by Alberti, but you see the side elevation has no uh, architectural features, really. It was left, uh, you know, uh, as being a side elevation. What can we say? This, this happens often, you know, you run out of funds and, you know, it's not so important perhaps because it's not seen. The egocentrism of the main elevations is well known. So this is Palazzo Rucellai in, uh, in, uh, in Florence, and we'll see also the Rucellai Palace. And there is also the, the tomb of, uh, of the, I don't know if the Rucellai family or the specific uh, Rucellai uh, that these three buildings actually uh, were dedicated to. Here again, we see the, the importance of, uh, of ornament. Of course, obviously, these are not, uh, you know, structural. They are here to celebrate the culmination of the column. That's all. Here is the chapel. The Ruchelai Chapel now is some kind of a, when I visited, there was a, you know, a, a store for, uh, I don't know, sneakers, uh, sports shoes. We are going to, to, to look further to these buildings in the second presentation. Interesting what is happening here. I don't know the building, it, I don't know if, if it was, the elevation was done intentionally like this, eroded on the edge or, uh, or in time, this building was built and then some things had been, uh, you know, uh, damaged. Uh, it's rather strange, but when you see this, you, you understand it's, it's, it's mainly uh, the skin, an elevation. This is the chapel. I don't know what that iceberg is. When I was there, it was something else. Uh, now I, I still see here, it's, um, you know, a fashion store. I seem to see clothing and whatever. But uh, in Alberti's time, there was no glass here, obviously. So this was like a loggia, actually. Not a chapel, a, a loggia. I like, again, the, these uh, graphic, uh, you know, interventions on the facade of the building. They are mysterious in a way. And what is their function? What do they say? What is the, uh, the raison d'etre? What, what is the narrative? Leon Battista Alberti, Florence. Now, Capella Rucellai, uh, there is a Capella Rucellai, uh, sorry, what we looked at before was the loggia that became a store lately, but uh, the Capella Rucellai is where someone from the family or a certain Rucellai is, is buried, is here, is this. Uh, the church was not built by Alberti, so this uh, San Pancrazio was not built by him. He just built a chapel where the, the, the sepulchre is. And uh, by now we know a little bit about Alberti. When, when we look at this, you know, it does look like uh, Alberti's uh, sensitivity. He was a very cultured man, uh, a man of letters, a man of many hats, so to speak. And um, you know, the complexity of his talents and his spirit are shown in his architectural work as well. He even wrote uh, literature, uh, fantastic literature, uh, a very, very interesting man, Alberti. And the reason he's considered the first architect is because until him, we had, for example, Brunelleschi, but Brunelleschi was still a man of the building site. He was not working at the drafting board distant from the, from, the, uh, from the building site. He was on the building site. 
That's why when I visited San Lorenzo in Florence, um, a PhD in, uh, in uh, philosophy, a young man, very kind and cultured, told me uh, Alberti was the first architect and Brunelleschi was the last carpenter because it was the transition between the medieval time to the Renaissance. And Brunelleschi, yes, he announced the Renaissance, but he still belonged in a way to the, you know, to those skills of uh, craftsmen that uh, characterized the Middle Ages. With Alberti, we have a, a, a different kind of architect. In a way, the first architect, as we know him or her today, you know, sitting at a drafting board or sitting in front of a computer or laptop, distant from the building site and uh, working on a project. He was an intellectual, uh, an intellectual, but uh, his intellect was uh, vast enough to not uh, arrive at, uh, you know, uh, sterility. And uh, anyway, it's interesting to compare Alberti with Brunelleschi, who preceded him in time a little bit. So we are looking at Leon Battista Alberti, the Rucellai Chapel in Florence, inside the church, which was not built by him. He only built this, uh, this chapel. The Chiesa, Chiesa di San Pancrazio is the church where this chapel finds itself. But again, it was not built by, uh, by Alberti. And I think now it's not a church any longer. It's some kind of a foundation or something. But the chapel by Alberti is inside, again, in Florence. And now we go to the second and last presentation of today, the third in a way, I mean the third, but the second, considering that I make two presentations on Alberti, is about uh, Alberti uh, seen by myself with pictures I took myself when I visited Florence and Mantua. But I will also show uh, Tempio Malatestino, Malatestiano in uh, Rimini, which I didn't visit, but I, I thought it's my duty to, to uh, complete the portrait of Leon Battista Alberti with, uh, with the important work he did in Rimini too. But we'll begin in Florence. Then we'll go to Mantua and, uh, and then to Rimini. Uh, again, these are pictures that I took when I visited some years ago Florence and I am in the vicinity of Santa Maria Novella. Uh, uh, we already saw the facade and this also, I think he also worked on this uh, enclosure. Uh, <laughs> uh, here I photographed some um, uh, shop windows which are right across the narrow, the narrow street from the church. And you can even see here at the top the reflection of the, of the church, uh, of the walls of the church or the enclosure of the you know, building site, the, the, the site of the, of the church in the, I, 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 I was intrigued by the dialectics between fashion, you know, modernity and uh, the reflection of church, of the church or spirit. And this is the, the, the main facade, the Western facade of the church, uh, Santa Maria Novella that was designed by Alberti. Leon Battista Alberti in Florence. The building is right across the street from um, the train station in Florence. So if you arrive in Florence by train or by, uh, by plane and from the airport, you take a, a train and you arrive in this train station and right, right across the street is, uh, is this important work by Alberti. I mean, look just at this corner, you know, the complexity of this corner. To me, I, I could write easily a, an essay just about what I see in this picture, you know, because there are interesting things happening here. Usually the corner is the most assertive part of the building, but is also the most vulnerable. And he seems to say this because exactly at the corner, he in a way sabotages the so-called normalcy of the corner going like this. So he, he enters into the corner 
uh, and uh, diminishes its um, assertiveness. This is an, an interesting subject. And even Miss van der Rohe, the Seagram building, uh, he, and usually the corner is indeed a critical moment, a, criti a critical part of any building. Uh, of any building which takes itself seriously and aspires towards being architecture. I mean, just the, just these uh, you know small details of the of the of the facade of this church that uh, Alberti designed uh, inspire me. Yes, it's about beauty. It's about equilibrium. It's about uh, balance. It's about harmony. Uh, Renaissance search for this for harmony. Now we we saw already this facade, the Rucellai uh, building. And its facade, which was built by uh, Alberti, we saw the loggia, which became a, a store lately. I like uh, black and white pictures more than colored ones, and uh, some of my uh, better pictures are those in black and white, actually. Uh, here again, I was intrigued by fashion because yes, it's a different world. You know, we have the, the world of ephemerality, exemplified by fashion, and then we have the world of uh, permanent values, in as much as we can say, uh, you know, permanent, because nothing is truly permanent. But, you know, religion or spirit uh, uh, is supposed to address uh, you know the, the the eternal you know if possible fashion on the other hand is is concerned with what is transitory uh, ephemeral circumstantial which passes away and they complement each other and i think charles baudelaire the great french painter was right when he said art has two halves one half speaks about the eternal the immutable, the permanent, and the other half about the transitory, the ephemeral, the circumstantial. I would agree. Here you will see an interesting picture, which I, I, I was happy to, to, to make, with an egg sitting uh, rather precariously on, on, on a head. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, it's not a real head, but uh, the head of a uh, an artificial head, so to speak. You'll see it. Here it is. I don't know exactly what was meant for, what, what was meant to symbolize, but uh, you know, an intriguing image, I would say. Right next to the Palazzo Rucellai by Alberti, a store, of uh, course, or uh, yeah, I think a store or half store, half gallery or some sort. Art is always present in Florence uh, continuously. So Santa Maria Novella, Florence, Leon Battista Alberti. Fifteenth century. Again, discrete ornaments. which animate the facade, which brings to the facade, the ornament brings to the facade, you know, a, a softness of, a, 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 here it is a, a solar clock. Uh, and uh, I don't know if this was built by, uh, by uh, Alberti. You know, the solar clock is also present. Uh, I mean, a, an angel holds the solar clock or yeah, at, um, that, most incredible cathedral from the Middle Ages, the Chartres Cathedral in France. And I will say the, the measurement of, of uh, the passage of time, uh, you know, uh, in this way is, seems to be a little bit uh, to assert men beyond the limits of what the religion might uh, be willing to ascribe to him. Anyway. Santa Maria Novella, Florence, uh, Leon Battista Alberti, the vehicles when had nothing to do with uh, Leon Battista Alberti, but these are pictures I took. Now I took the bus from not far away from, uh, from Santa Maria Novella 
towards Mantua to see two important works by um, Alberti there. And uh, this is a picture taken from the bus. And yes, the silhouette of Mantua is unreal. It's, you know, it's you know, like in a science fiction movie. Uh, so Mantua is seen through the uh, front glass of the bus. And here I am in front of, uh, of uh, you know, Sant'Andrea in Mantua, uh, maybe the most important work by, uh, by uh, uh, Alberti. Unfortunately, when I was there, as you can see, the, the elevation was uh, receiving uh, uh, restoration, so I couldn't. But anyway, it, it, can, be, it can be found uh, with countless pictures on, uh, on the web. What disturbed me here is that the building by the Renaissance great architect Alberti enters rather violently in, in, the, in the older, you know, uh, tower, a medieval tower here. And uh, with, uh, with any deep regard with, uh, you know, uh, creating a space of transition. So you can see on the web what I mean better because here, because of the scaffolding, you cannot see. But the purity of what I'm trying to say is the purity of the main elevation, the Western elevation of this important church by uh, uh, Alberti uh, sacrifices the vicinity of this older tower, um, you know, less famous, but. Uh, you know, just because it was older, and I think it would have deserved a little more uh, uh, respect. I am not, uh, you know, in any way uh, trying to diminish the greatness of Alberti, quite the opposite. I am paying homage to him now, but sometimes um, I, am, uh, I am puzzled by certain things. You see here, and if you remove the scaffolding, you'll see that the, the, the elevation of the building crashes into some windows here. I mean, it blocks them off. There is no, uh, you know, delicate, uh, you know, handling of the relationship between the older tower and the new uh, building. The interior is, is admirable. I, I had to go twice because when I went first, uh, it was some kind of a lunchtime and it was closed. This is just the, uh, the space in front of the of the the entrance doors it was locked but i came back and then i was able to enter the building um alberti sant'andrea in mantua Fifteenth century, so more than five hundred years old. This building, I actually like. I always like scaffoldings because they are expressions of uh, you know uh, the process of becoming. And uh, I like them because of it. Now I am in front of the other building uh, in, in Mantua, which is, uh, I like it very much. It's, it's smaller, but it uh, has this uh, classical, uh, it's almost temple-like, uh, and not so much the campanile, but uh, you know, the, the main elevation of the building I understood these two stairs had been added later. Um, this is San Sebastiano, also in Mantua, by uh, Leon Battista Alberti, because I was unable to enter the Sant'Andrea, the large uh, church. I, uh, you know, I, I, I decided to visit this smaller work and then come back later to, and we are going to see the interior of Sant'Andrea as well. This was a, a poster in front of the church when I visited it of this uh, famous uh, contemporary Chinese, uh, you know, uh, enfant terrible artist, Al Weiwei, 
an interesting artist and architect as well. This is the plan of uh, the temp Tempio di San Sebastiano. So it's, it's, it's considered a temple, not a church. And I, I, I always like this, uh, this uh, ability or interest that uh, uh, Palladio had, uh, not Palladio, but even with Palladio, because Palladio was interested in, uh, in the, you know, the ancient uh, architecture of the Roman Forum. And so they, they, there was a connection in the Renaissance between the, 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 you know, the pagan ancestry and the Christian ancestry. So even when they design churches, there is something, you know, uh, arriving uh, uh, during the Renaissance from the Roman, um, you know, pagan, uh, pagan uh, culture and pagan religion. The, not, not all the building has, uh, I, I think there were various uh, interventions, and, but this part belongs to him. Not so much I understood these two stairs. I think they were added later. But the, you know, the, the classical, so to speak, facade of the church, of the tempio, of the temple, sorry, of San Sebastiano, uh, it's, it's, it's Alberti, all right. I tried to photograph whatever I, I was able to do. I, I couldn't get in, but there was much to see nevertheless. Uh, beauty is not hard to, to come across in Italy, wherever you go. Back to, uh, no, not yet. I thought I, I, I came back to, I thought it was the space in front of the entrance in uh, Sant'Andrea, but I was wrong. I, 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 I used my camera in various modes because I had some time to kill, so to speak, and uh, I was intrigued by this building. I also like the tectonics of, uh, you know, of these bricks. So this is Tempio di San Sebastiano in Mantua by Alberti. Here we see I, I, I left San Sebastiano and I was moving back towards uh, Sant'Andrea di Mantua. And here we are. Here is the elevation with the scaffolding. So I was moving in its direction. Uh, uh, getting closer and closer. There are other interesting architectures around it. It's not just, this is Sant'Andrea, this is the main facade of uh, Sant'Andrea, but there are also here interesting, other interesting architectures that I know nothing about like this, but they are not less impressive, I would say. Probably from the Middle Ages. But now we will enter Sant'Andrea in Mantua, and you will see photographs from there, a very impressive interior, unfortunately a little bit uh, excessively uh, adorned with uh, decorations. I do advocate uh, ornament, ornamentation, ornaments, but not decorations and not as excessively as they are actually displayed in Sant'Andrea, but I don't think it was him who designed those and uh, they, they must have been later, later additions. But in the meantime, I love these graffitis, you know, Ti amo, Diego, these were, you know, these are graffitis on the, on the you know, panels um, protecting the building site. And, uh, you know, they, they, are, they are signs of life. They are signs of love. They are signs of uh, being young. Maybe irresponsible, it's okay. It's okay, you know, again, Ti amo. Ti amo, because what would life be without love? Nothing. Uh, so, from 2015, another Tiamo. Okay, so this is the church, but also with housing around it. I took many pictures because I was fascinated by the hybridity of, of everything. And now, well, this is the interior. I, I got inside the, 
uh, in the large, very large uh, church, Sant Andrea, very impressive in terms of space and light and structure, less impressive in my opinion, in terms of uh, ornamentation, which seemed to be to me a little bit uh, disturbing because of its excesses. It sweetened unnecessarily, I would say that, but if you do not see it or if you, you know, uh, don't pay much attention to it, uh, it's very moving, the, the spatial and structural architectonic, uh, you know, uh, seriousness and force of this building. Is this that turns me off, but I'm sure these, these do not belong, they didn't belong to, to Alberti. They, they were additions later on. Uh, you see, it's just too much. It's too much and uh, rather heterogeneous uh, ornamentations. Not, in my opinion, I could be wrong. This is this is what I feel and think. But the building is great. It's great and uh, it has uh, all the characteristics of uh, of uh, you know a very harmonious, uh, impressive. Uh, uh, architectural uh, mountain, I feel like saying, although it's not a mountain, but uh, the ornaments, the decorations leave me, leave me cold or uh, worse. It may, they make them a little, make me a little bit uh, worried. Yeah, I, I feel these, these were added, you know, that the, the magnificence of the architecture should have been spared of, of, of all this rather heterogeneous uh, ornaments, which are, they don't show the same unity of spirit like the building. The building is, is formidable, is uh, truly one of the best, in my opinion, churches of the Renaissance. Leon Battista Alberti in Mantua. The first architect who died on the 25th of April. And that's why we pay homage to him today. Now, we saw the ornaments of uh, Alberti on, uh, on the facade of uh, Santa Maria Novella. Nothing of this sort. His ornaments were abstract. They were, you know, uh, they had a very different spirit. Now, the, the, these are decorations. They are not ornaments, as I, as I would advocate them. But the building has the majesty of a great achievement. Now we arrive at the last building I show today and the last building I show by Alberti. I didn't visit it. I took these pictures from the web, <clears throat> but I thought we should see it. So we have a more complete image of this great Renaissance figure, Leon Battista Alberti. Is the Tempio Malatestiano in Rimini uh, actually, the way I found the information is uh, 1447 or 1453, but it cannot be a building at that time was not built in one year. So I guess somewhere in between these two years, you know, more than 550 years ago was built. And it is a tempio, it is temple-like, it's not finalized at the top. We are going to see a model. But I like very much, in, in a way, I like it even more incomplete like this. You know, it, it's, uh, it's uh, in a way, it's more modern. But, but these fragments already make me, you know, so to speak, take my hat off in front of the brilliance of Alberti. Simplicity in complexity, complexity in, in simplicity. And it is temple-like, it's the house of spirit. It's the house of spirit beyond cultural, beyond religious denominations. This is the plan and the longitudinal section. Uh, I, I have a few pictures from the inside as well, again, which I found on the web. I'm actually not so, I'm, I'm glad actually this, this Tempio was not, uh, final as vertically that this part actually was not built. Uh, I find it a little bit too exuberant, although I'm not ex against exuberance, but I don't think this facade, if it was complete, it would have had the, the brilliance of the facade that, uh, in Florence of Santa Maria Novella. 
I love this picture. I mean, this picture, you know, in sepia, uh, it shows the, 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 I don't know, the beauty of an architecture that is animated by ideals. Uh, also, uh, it has a certain gravity. It's not a superficial building. Classicism as well. You know, it was a Renaissance. That's why when I look at this building, I cannot accept the decorations inside uh, Sant Andrea in Mantua. He uses a little bit, you know, like here, but uh, in a very different way and, and discreet way. Now, <clears throat> there were interventions here too, I'm sure in time, you know, we, we look at only at suggestions of, of what was then 550 years ago. So this is in Rimini, or Rimini, I don't know very well how to place the accent on this Italian word, this city in Italy, uh, Tempio Maratestiana. And here is the model. Uh, I don't know if this model came to us, I don't think so. I think it's a more you know, recent uh, model based on the drawings that came down to us. Um, I don't know what to say, you know, it's, I like it more as it is now. And I'm, I'm not finalized without this, uh, uh, you know, rather inflamed uh, top. But yes, I like it like this. But uh, I'm a little bit surprised. I thought I had other pictures. So that was it today. Thank you for being here. And um, hello, Leon Battista Alberti.